Forcibly unemployed, desperate to feed their families and crying out for help, Californians are revolting across the state. And the governor, Nancy Pelosi's nephew, Gavin Newsom, doesn't seem to care. Instead, he's threatened to extend the shutdown if the people don't stay inside. This is a story that the mainstream media will not tell you. This is the truth of what's really happening across California. The mainstream media doesn't have our backs. They don't care. In fact, they enjoy covering the truth and they enjoy being deceptive. Luckily, the people at Blaze TV are extremely supportive of this show and many like it and will continue to do so. So sign up at blazetv.com slash slightly offensive. The code is in the description. Do it before it's too late. It's our best deal ever. We are providing you with truth in a time where it's barely available. But revolt is contagious. Right now across the state of California and many other states, citizens are fed up and tired with the lockdown that they are saying is ruining their lives more than the disease itself. But leave it up to the politicians, the elites, the establishment, as well as the media operatives to tell you as a citizen that your life isn't as significant as those that are being saved by these crucial stay-at-home social distancing orders. And if you dare question the demigods, if you dare speak the truth online, even if you have 517,000 followers like the account Educating Liberals, if you step out of line, they will make sure your voice is silenced. And no, this is not about conspiracies. It doesn't matter if you have an MD. It doesn't matter if you're a DO. Or, hey, even if you barely graduated high school, your voice only counts when you align with the globalists like those at the World Health Organization, with Bill Gates, and none other than the United Nations, above all else. But citizens don't believe everything they see. In fact, Americans are intelligent. And there was a protest that erupted across California just the other day. A big one erupted in Orange County, California, one of the bigger counties here in the state. And if you want to know the size of this protest, I would put it at about four to 500 uh, people, maybe a little bit more. And the minute I got word that people were resisting, I wanted to know their story. So uh, I went down to the place, and uh, what you'll see right here is my footage of what I saw. So with hundreds of protesters in Orange County and posting this tweet to a modest 21 or 2200 retweets, it wasn't uh, soon before people began to repost this, not in favor and promotion, but talking about how we are all basically bringing on the genocide of the country. But are we? Are the people protesting really evil people? Or, in fact, are they seeing something that the media is pretending isn't there? And that's where we get into the real question of what's going on. I went and spoke to a woman uh, to ask her, are you basically just out of here because uh, you want your conveniences back? Which is one accusation people say. People don't care about the lives of others. They're selfish and they want uh, their haircuts. They want their nails done. They want their waxes. Um, I don't believe that actually. So when it comes down to it, let's see what she had to say. All right, so your sign says that family is essential. Let me work. Are you out of work right now? Yes. Uh, what do you do for work? I'm a hairstylist. <laughs> You're a hairstylist? Yeah. Okay, so actually, how have you seen this impact your family right now not being able to work? Well, uh, first of all, I have everyone who's back at my house, and I do have a mortgage, and I have homeowner's insurance, and I have insurance that I have to pay, bills to pay, and I have my whole family living with me. So without being able to work, there's no way for me to provide for my family, which actually causes a lot of stress. And I have, you know, children who are deathly afraid. They live in fear, and I'm just not going to live in fear anymore. I just can't. I can't. I want Gavin Newsom, please, if you're listening, and President Trump, if you're listening, we need you to get the state open. Look at all the thousands of people here. We love this state. We just want to get back to work. And it's really not about party affiliation. It's about freedom. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So your sign says that right. family is a... So what's important here is this mother, uh, not looking for convenience, but to provide for her children, has explained that as a hairdresser, she's unable to earn a living for uh, her family in order to feed her kids. Now, if that sounds like desperation, it's because it is. 
People in the state are realizing that right now with 1,600 or approximately 1,750 deaths, I think the, the most recent update was in California, is the problem here really as big as many are making it? Because as it turns out, there were COVID deaths in the state traced back as early as February and January. But I believe if you think about this, since most Asian Americans live in California and a lot of the connecting flights come between San Francisco and Los Angeles from China and to the Pacific, it would make sense that if the pandemic had reached any place first, it would have been here. And due to recent studies that have come out, not only of Stanford, not only out of USC, public health, out of New York, out of Florida, it turns out that in some suggestions, over 13.9% of people randomly sampled already displayed signs of COVID antibodies, which means that the exposure of citizens is drastically beyond what people are exaggerating it to be, meaning that the mortality rate is much lower as a fact, not as an opinion. But don't question that as a few uh, physicians recently found out, stating health statistics from the World Health Organization, while also stating uh, statistics from the CDC, that their video would have been pulled by Google from YouTube for violating, uh, what? The facts from the CDC and the World Health Organization. Doesn't matter if they quoted them. If you question the narrative, you are not worthy of being a part of it. And that's what we're learning. But you know what? When it comes down to it, uh, there's not everyone is, is on board with this. There was this protester there um, who came in. I want to point this thing out. Let's watch this for a second. Is uh, blocking the flow of traffic here at Gridlock, uh, Orange County here at Orange Circle. Now, what's really interesting is uh, as they stopped traffic um, back and diverted it, uh, she's currently negotiating with the police. Uh, the woman inside interviewed said specifically that she was protesting because her family was immunocompromised and also stated that uh, she believes the people out here are basing their protest off of the media, which is an interesting perspective uh, because of that. Now, if you, if you follow me here uh, for the report, protesters... You can't, you can't even find a spot on the beach. There's not enough police to stop this. That's why everybody, 60,000 people went to the beach USA, yesterday. Yeah. You USA, can't stop this. You are a minority. USA! 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 We the people have the power. No one else does. We have the power. Now, is she being asked to leave? Are you being... Are you being asked to leave or no? One of them did, and then the other police officer said that I don't have to leave. So it's your right to protest. They're giving you your right to keep your car in the middle of traffic. Yeah, the one that, that doesn't have a hat on, and I don't believe you. How, how, long, how long would you plan to protest, or what is what do you hope to get from this? Um, I just think that people need to consider. Um, I think I've answered enough of your questions. No, no, yeah, I just was trying to get what they said to you. And so this young woman uh, had decided to come out to protest, and she was actually a genuinely kind girl. I spoke to her after the matter of fact that she said that I think her uncle and certain people that she knew were immunocompromised. She thought these people were foolish. But also the fact being is that she's wearing a mask and not covering her nose or her mouth, which basically renders the mask useless, which doesn't make me judge this woman because I think that she probably did this out of a genuine heart to block the traffic and essentially to come in and to, to make her voice known. I think that she's provided with, with a lot of misinformation. Um, number one, that cloth masks are not extremely effective, according to, to studies by the CDC and even by Viet in Vietnam Health, uh, even, even a country that's not even in line with, I would say, <laughs> not even in line with Western values, realized that cloth masks in some ways can actually be a hotbed for bacteria and viruses, not actually prevent them. Uh, this woman led a protest. People were angry at her, but who's right? In fact, she said in another in interview that I did that uh, she was protesting the protesters because she thought that they were only resisting the shutdown orders because of brainwashing by the media. But is the media brainwashing people? I don't know, but I know that she did receive a moving violation uh, after 20 minutes or so of being told she was allowed to protest in the street. It looks like one officer didn't support that. But as we get down to it, we got to ask ourselves then, what is the truth? If a, a certification as, a, as an MD will not provide you the guaranteed ability to make your own opinionated statement about what the seriousness of the COVID is right now in our country. And if right now, if you look at this, uh, what are we relying on? Well, our good man, Gavin Newsom, the, the governor of California says, when it comes to reopening, science, science, not politics, must be California's guide. California's developed six indicators that will help 
guide how and when we decide to reopen our economy. This isn't about an on and off switch. This will be a thoughtful process led by public health. But of course, only public health officials that are individually sanctioned and allowed to speak don't be one of those health officials or public health employees who actually looks at the data yourself. Just like the Catholic Church once said that only the priests could read and it was in Latin so the people didn't know and a reformation occurred where people wanted to read scripture for themselves to find out the truth and not go through a middleman. I think I'm tired of going through a middleman and I think you are too. Which is why we have to look at these stats. And when we look at the stats of what is going on in this state, just in California, from the Center of Disease Control, heart disease killed 62,000 in 2017. These are the most recent stats that they have on these. Cancer, 59,000. Stroke, 16,000. You might be saying, hey, 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 hold up. Those are not preventable diseases. Well, first of all, they in very many ways are. Now, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but uh, we don't really know full mechanisms of what caused certain types of cancer, although there's many suggestions. Heart disease uh, could be you know, given to, to old age, but a diet, exercise, I know alcohol, different things, smoking have a lot to do with the, the health of your heart. I mean, you go to Alzheimer's, chronic, chronic lower respiratory disease, but what's interesting is like accidents in our state kill 13,840 people, yet we don't, so you have more of a chance of dying by going to work through accidents than you do from dying from the, the, the virus. Like, I mean, you could die in a car, you could die falling or hiking, whatever it is. It's like in your normal life, you have a higher chance right now of dying from just normal miss like problems than you do from this virus. But that doesn't stop you from going out and living your life. Influenza and pneumonia, while hard to determine in some ways due to a lack of testing and individuals who do not report uh, this as part of their death, you had 6,340 uh, in 2017. And I went ahead and calculated the numbers um, here of flu and influenza deaths, I think I found up to 2018 from the CDC, and confirmed or suggested was somewhere around 59,000. But of course, those are the people who were just tested. That doesn't include people who weren't, as well as, I don't know, uh, you know, people who died from other diseases. Because when you're when you're calculating uh, who died from the flu and I mean the influenza and the uh, and pneumonia, you're using real factors of did they die from the disease, not like the shoddy reporting of oh well if somebody just had COVID antibodies or showed symptoms and signs, we counted them as deaths, like one uh, official said recently, that they really are not using a scientific method and a real proven way to, to exemplify that the people dying from COVID are genuinely dying for COVID. And that's a big effing problem. And that's why this puts me in a, in a very tough spot here, guys. I'm in a very tough spot because Bill, uh, I don't think it's Bill Nelligan, uh, a local Fox reporter said some context, 0.002% of LA County's population has tested positive for, uh, positive for COVID-19. Though the real number is obviously likely significantly higher. 0.0009% of LA County's population has died as a result of the virus. 10 million plus people. Which is very interesting that as we make the numbers sound big and scary, is it really that scary? Because if numbers don't lie, then the truth that they're telling us is one that it seems like the experts are unable to accept. But where does the madness come from? Why is there such a resistance to understanding the realities that are before us? Why don't people seem to see what everybody else is seeing? That's a good question. And it's because of this article from Business Insider titled, Trolls and Bots Are Flooding Social Media with Disinformation Encouraging States to End Quarantine. Truth be told, this is where it gets scary. If you take up the position I'm taking, even though we look at Agenda 21, Event 201, when we look at what's going on with mandatory vaccinations, even myself being a pro-vaccination person, but realizing that my liberties do not allow you to force me to do anything to myself or to my kids in that terminology. Realizing and understanding that though I look at the facts, though I've been trying to understand the scientific journals, my opinion, my perspective is invalid because it is not the narrative's perspective. When you recognize and realize that the homeless are still rapidly on the streets, Gavin Newsom says, oh, we're housing 11,000 of them. Well, good, 50,000 more to go. 
You aren't doing much to really change the course of human history to help it when you align yourself with the people who are trying to deceive you. But as it says here, the people like me, who are we? Who are you? We're trolls. We are bots. We are the ones flooding the system. But of course, it could never be that you're a real person or I'm a real person. We are always Russian bots. We are Ukrainian bots. We are Chinese bots. And now we are just trolls and computers who don't see what the experts are seeing. The same ones who have been wrong every single time. And to bring up the blatant hypocrisy, if the pandemic was as bad as Newsom says, threatening to take away the rights of individuals, why would he hypocritically create his own website to match healthy Californians with volunteer opportunities? If you can't work for your own damn money, why can you work for free? If it is so unsafe to go outside, why can we shop? Why can we walk? Why can we volunteer? Maybe it's not about what is safe and unsafe, but more or less about what they can tell you to do. And who's they? The same people we fought against in the revolution, defended in the War of 1812, fought in World War I and World War II, defended in the Cold War throughout the last century, and even today, a far left which continues to wage a war and assault on our generation, our people. These people are liars, hypocrites, deceivers that hide the truth. And you, are you a bot? Are you a troll? Or are you just an informed citizen of the United States? My name is Elijah Schaefer, the host of Slightly Offensive. This is the Daily Dose, a weekly report. As always, providing you information that matters to you most. Please make sure, as always, you sign up for The Blaze at blazetv.com slash slightly offensive. Have a great rest of the week, as always, and may God bless the United States of America. I'm signing off. Yeah.